Hi everyone! In today's video I'll be trying my hand at a Star Wars hairstyle. This is meant to be Padme and I'm going to show you how I built an inspired headdress and then styled it into my hair. I'll include some reference photos in the underbar should you like to see what I'm working off of. For this project I will be using a glue gun and glue sticks. I've got a set of wire cutters and nylon jaw pliers along with silver tone craft wire and 18 gauge. I'll also be using strips of velcro, a pair of scissors, two plain metal headbands, strips of cotton, small silver seed beads, and finally I have lavender ribbon in two sizes. One is two inches wide and the other one is just one inch wide. I'm starting with the headbands. This is very reminiscent to a Vikings headdress that I did pretty recently and then I'm using the cotton to cover the entire length of the hair accessory. To do this, I'm simply wrapping the cotton around and utilizing the glue gun to keep it in place. This will act as a stuffing between the headband and the ribbon in the next step, and it will give the illusion of a fuller looking adornment. Once the entire thing is wrapped up, I measured out another piece that was about 10 inches long and I glued that around the center. My idea here was that the additional cotton would make the final piece look as though it was thickest in the middle while tapering out on the sides. Here I'm working with a 2 inch wide lavender ribbon. It's a bit lighter in color than the actresses, but since this is only inspired, I decided to work with a color that I liked best personally. Plus, you know, spring is coming and I love pastels during this time. To keep the ribbon wrapping even, I started on one end, brought it all the way to the midpoint before stopping to wind a secondary piece on the other side. Once both ends were at the top, I bound them around the headband in the way that I thought was most flattering, and then I repeated all the same steps on the second headband as well. Now for the third tier, I've resorted to the 18 gauge wire, and that's because when you get lower on the crown, the circumference of the head becomes slightly rounder and wider, so the headband no longer works in this space. I held it up to this point off screen and used my own head to calculate how much was necessary for this piece. I also made sure that the wire extended from ear to ear. I think you can probably see that I left a few extra inches on either side, and that I'm only wrapping the cotton and ribbon around the rounded portion. I did fast forward here a bit too because I made the fourth tier in the same way by using the space below my occipital bone to measure out the necessary amount of wire. This part is definitely optional, but I thought it might be helpful, especially for tier 3 and 4. I've cut a few strips of the velcro and I'm gluing them to the inside of the headbands. This material will hold everything to my hair a smidge more tightly at the end, and if you were building this to wear to a con, that added security would be one less thing to worry about in terms of your costume. The fifth tier of the headdress is the only piece that's freestanding from the others. This bit of 18 gauge wire is 12 inches long and I'm wrapping it from end to end with the same cotton and ribbon. But before connecting everything together, I went in with my silver seed beads. There's really no obvious pattern here, I just tried to space them out as evenly as was possible. I actually tried to use them sparingly too because I thought less was more here. I probably should have used a different glue, I really battled with those stringy bits from the gun, but whatever, maybe next time during a different project. Now I know. With the embellishments completed, it was time to turn the four tiers into one solid piece. I started with the two headbands. They're glued together on both ends at a slant with a space between them. If you need to, use a mannequin head or even your own so that you can determine where to connect them. I actually did that exact thing when it came to attaching the third and fourth rungs. I don't know if you can see, but I did bend the ends of them slightly in the places where I wanted to glue. And that's what's so awesome about working with craft wire and such lightweight materials. You can move and bend them into the exact positions that you need. Now if you remember, I had leftover wire on the two bottom halves. I decided to twist them together for a little extra security before snipping off the excess and bending them flush against the outside. The last part of my project is also optional. I thought the sides looked a bit sloppy after the glue, so here I've got a 10 inch piece of the smaller lavender ribbon. I'm just using it to cover the connection, and I think it's clear that I did this by simply winding it in, out, and around this area. Honestly, once it's styled in the hair, no one would see this, but sometimes I can be obsessive about these small details. The hair that I've planned isn't super complicated, but it does involve building as much volume as is possible. I started by using my texture iron on everything first, which doubled its width and appearance, and then I made a center parting. The only two sections that get made are done at the very start, and each of them begin about 2 inches back from the hairline and extend to slightly behind the ear. They're both made on an angle too, and for now I'm using some style clips to keep them separate from the back. Here I'm using a bit of Aveda's Pure Abundance Teasing Powder, and that's because I'll be backcombing the entire mass of hair in the center. 
Normally I like to work from the bottom up, but for some reason I chose to do it the other way around. Honestly, this was a mistake, but by the time I realized it, I was two sections in already. If I had been working on someone else, it probably would have been fine, but when I flipped the teased hair over so that I could go to the next section, I couldn't see anything. I had to clip it out of my face, which kind of messed with the direction of my hair. Anyway, I'll have my hair teasing 101 video linked in the underbar just in case, but if you prefer not to back home, you could always resort to clip-in extensions or hair foundations for that extra lift and volume. As you can see, I'm using a combination of both a comb and my fingers to smooth back my hair. I'm really focused on that top layer and not so much on the stuff underneath. Obviously, you've got to take care here because you need to keep that cushion beneath it intact. I actually took more time with this than I did with the tease itself, and when I was finally comfortable with how it looked, I put in an elastic at the nape. The ponytail is then wrapped around two fingers and rolled up to the neck to form a poofy bun. I needed this to be tight, so I ended up using four two-inch bobby pins to hold it. Now for the fun part, the headpiece. Because of the velcro on the inside, I had to be careful that my first placement was the right one. If I put it on wrong and had to move it, I'd run the risk of fraying that smooth surface, which I'd just taken some time to create. Luckily I got it right though, which meant I could move on to those side pieces. I'm using one of those topsy tail tools, and you can see that I'm placing it between the third and fourth tiers before hooking the hair through. And it's in this way that I've successfully hidden the sides of the accessory like I said we would earlier. I used a few open pins to secure the ends of the sections from along my face above the bun, and then it was time for that final and fifth rung. As you can see, I simply wrapped it over the elastic from the ponytail, and that was pretty much it. I hope you all liked my video today. I'm constantly asked to try Padme hair cosplays out, so I'm happy that I've gotten the opportunity to fulfill that a little bit today. I'm actually thinking of doing a few videos focusing on her style, and if you like that idea, let me know by leaving me a thumbs up or a comment. Until next time, have fun and keep braiding. Bye!